What's up guys, coming at you again with another tutorial. It's been a long time since I've posted a video on this channel. I've been just busy with work and other things, but the channel's actually gained a lot of traction recently and I really have been wanting to get back and make some more tutorials for the channel. Lately I've been spending a lot of time doing some configuration with SSL VPN for multiple customers and I thought I would do a short video on just a simple basic SSL VPN configuration on the FortiGate. Um, and I think I'm going to try and create like little mini videos to go along with this video on um, different SSL VPN capabilities and settings using um, authentication with uh, RADIUS and LDAP and other two-factor methods. In this video today, I'm just going to use um, local users and groups for a simple, just basic um, setup. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go over here to the uh, VPN settings and we're going to create our SSL VPN portal. You can use the one that they have configured by default. However, I usually like to create um, a new one anytime. I don't usually like using the, the default profiles and whatnot on the FortiGate. So for this one, I'm just going to call Home SSL VPN. You can choose here to enable this split tunnel where if you uncheck this um, toggle here, what it's going to do is just going to send all of your traffic from your uh, device through the FortiGate, internet traffic and any other traffic that you're going to send, it's all going to come through the FortiGate. I usually do split tunneling um, just because uh, with bandwidth and if you have a customer who has a lot of users, you want to kind of limit the amount of traffic that's using that SSL VPN configuration. So I usually enable split, split tunneling. However, if you want to untoggle this, um, you know, that would be a full tunnel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the addresses that I want to add to my SSL VPN connection. Whenever the users connect, these are the addresses that it's going to add to that user's routing table so that it can be routed to the FortiGate. For my home network, I'm just going to select uh, this, my homeland, the 192.168, because that's the only thing I want um, to traverse this SSL VPN tunnel. And again, even if you don't want to do a full on, you know, full tunnel and you still want to do split tunneling, if there are some public addresses that you want routed through the FortiGate, create an address entry for it and slap it in here and it'll send that traffic um, the correct way. So for source IP pools, um, I'm just going to use that the SSL VPN FortiGate creates this one by default. Um, I'm just going to use this for this exercise, but you can create an address that has, you know, you can create your own subnet that you want if you want to use your own subnet for SSL VPN. I'm going to use this one here. And here you have some options. Um, you know, I'm just going to leave all this unchecked, but if you, if any of these stick out to you that you want to configure, go ahead. I will say that I have had no luck with split tunneling. Um, I've, I've seen similar things online with people having issues with it. I have uh, had no luck with that. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Um, enable web mode. I'm not going to enable web mode at this time. I'm going to do a separate video on web mode. It's actually a really cool mode that allows users to log in through the um, web browser if they need to get to a few things or do very basic tasks. Um, it allows them to do that. Um, enable for a client download. I'm going to download for the client from a separate website. So I don't need to allow that. And I'm going to click OK. So I have my portal set up. Once I have that set up, I'm going to go into my settings here, my SSL VPN settings. This is the interface. I'm going to select the interface I want to listen for SSL VPN connections. I would imagine most of the time this will be the um, the WAN interface on the network that you're using, whatever public interface, because you want it, um, you know, to be hit publicly, most likely. Um, but anyway, you could select any interface for this here. I'm going to go ahead and select my WAN interface and get rid of that placeholder I had. Um, listening on port 443, it has this by default. However, this port can conflict with a lot of other things. Um, Fortinet usually um, recommends that you change this to 10443 just to, you know, use a port that's not likely used for any other applications that you have going on. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put four, 10, four, four, three for mine. And then I leave this unchecked here. This is gonna you know, redirect users. I don't want uh, users to be redirected. I'm only wanna use um, the secure port um, for this connection. So here you can restrict access um, to specific addresses. If you really wanna lock down your SSL VPN, if you know that only a few users are gonna be using it from certain um, addresses, you can lock this down here. However, I'm just gonna allow access from any hosts. Um, you know, if you have a, a large user base, this could get kind of sticky if you try to configure that. This idle logout piece right here, um, what this is gonna toggle is if you want the VPN connection, if it's stale, if no traffic's being passed, um, to sever it and cause the user a disconnect and for them to re-log in. What I usually use is I still leave this on just in case, you know, you don't want users just connected to your VPN for days. But I do increase the time limit here um, a little bit. So 300 seconds, five minutes really isn't a whole lot. Um, it is super secure that way. However, if you have users that'll be in and out um, doing work, you'll probably want to increase this. So I'm going to go ahead and increase it to 14400. Service certificate here, this can be changed. This is the certificate that users will be presented with whenever they try to connect. Um, the Fortinet factory one, I suggest changing it from this cert here uh, because I think there's actually um, an article out there um, saying that this can be leveraged for a man in the middle attack. Uh, but you should always upload your own cert here, uh, a trusted cert, so that users don't receive a certificate issue when they try to connect to the SSL VPN. Client, require client cert. Um, I, I might go into this in a different uh, tutorial, but this is if you're using two-factor. Part down here where it's uh, asking you to uh, assign addresses. These are the IP addresses that users that connect SSL VPN that they'll receive. By default, um, the FortiGate has this 10, 212, 134. It's, uh, it's 10, 10 addresses. By default, it just gives them this range. Uh, this is an address that I showed you in the SSL VPN portal. It just comes default on all FortiGates. However, if you want to assign a specific IP address, um, you know, you could do that here. Um, it's also done in the portal, uh, but if you have different portals for different customers, you kind of set the difference there. Um, but since we're only doing one, I'm just going to leave this here, um, you know, leave the default setting. Here you can um, choose to allow the client to use their DNS that's set on their system, or you can specify servers. We usually specify, you know, whatever local DNS um, the company wants to use um, for users that connect. So whenever the user connects, they'll be assigned these DNS servers, and that's what they'll use. Down here is where you map them to the portal. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as same as client. Then I'm going to, you know, it has the all other users groups, which I believe will work uh, if you set a portal to this. And for, for unfortunately, it makes you set a portal. I think there's a way to delete that, but haven't really looked into that, which is probably a best practice to delete that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and um, select a user. Um, so the user I'm going to do, the group, I'm just going to do a group that I created um, called Local Users. And I'm going to do um, the portal. I'm going to select the home SSL VPN that I set up. So got my user group that I want to use with my local user that I have right here. And the portal that I want to use that we set up here. And now um, what I'm going to do is, oh, whoa, all my settings disappeared. I have to change these back. So you want to make sure you hit apply here to save. And it's going to tell you at the top, you don't have any policies that exist um, for your SSL VPN. So there's a few different pieces to the SSL VPN configuration. You have to assign the portal, you have to set the settings, you have to assign the user or group that you want access um, to the SSL VPN, then you have to create a firewall policy for it. So you can go into firewall policies and create it, but if you just click this up here, this hyperlink, it'll bring you into the firewall policies and it'll assign the SSL VPN 
interface automatically for you. So what I'm going to call my policy is SSL VPN to inside because this is only going to access my internal network um, the way that I have it set up. So we're going to leave the incoming interface because that's what's going to be listening for the SSL VPN connection. Then I'm going to put my, um, my home network zone that I have set up and source. You can set this to all, but I'm going to go ahead and um, select this just to keep it secure or at least a little bit more secure. And then it's going to tell me that it needs a user or group, you know, whoever is authenticating. So here I'm going to select the user group that I selected in the settings. Destination. Now I only wanted to access my homeland, so I'm going to put my homeland address. Services. You can get granular here, and if you only need specific services um, allowed, you would do that here. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to select all. Make sure this is set to accept. Um, I don't need this traffic to be natted. Um, you can do that if you want. However, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to leave that natted. You can assign your security profiles here, just like you would any other policy. I'm going to go ahead and log off. Well, I'll just keep this one in security events. And then I'm going to enable this policy. Once I do that, your little warning will go way up here. And then we can go look at our SSL VPN settings. So this is what it should look like. Um, it's going to be listening on this SSL VPN interface, source, destination, all of your attributes right here. So why don't we try and connect to our SSL VPN configuration. Hopefully it works. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a new connection. And for my connection name, I'm just going to put home net. And then for my gateway, You're going to put your IP address, or if you have a domain name associated with it, you're going to use that. And then I'm going to customize my port. And going back to the certificate settings in the um, SSL VPN settings, your client cert, you could set here if you use that. If you're using a single sign on, you could select this here. Um, you could choose to save your log on if you want. And then I usually, if you're using the factory or any other type of cert that's not going to be, uh, you know, that's self sign or something like that, I usually select do not warn about the self sign cert. All right, so let's go ahead and see what happens. All right. So as you can see, I'm connected. I have the IP address and the range that we set up and I'm connected to my SSL VPN at my home. Um, so from here, the way we have it set up right now, all my internet traffic is still gonna go out of the internet circuit that I'm on. Um, and then any traffic that's destined to the network that we set as our destination and we put in our SSL VPN portal is gonna be routed through the FortiGate. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, um, if you have any tips or anything else that you can figure on your SSL VPN settings, um, please let me know if you think I did something wrong. I'd love to hear any feedback because I'm always looking to improve on the way that I do things. So please let me know if you guys want me to do any tutorials on anything else. Um, you know, I plan on doing one on the on doing the threat feeds that you can um, set as a fabric connector in the FortiGate in the near future. Um, but please let me know, leave a comment, like the video, and until next time, have a good one.